Bye, Polyton Sisters, part two. Apologize. I want to apologize for the quality for the, from the first video. Uh, I thought it was much better. But okay, let's go on. I've showed in the preceding video these transistors, germanium transistors, made by Philips, power transistors, made for high voltage applications, old germanium power transistors and medium power transistors. I've showed the um, um, wet finger transistor tester here with one transistor and a light emitting diode. When I touched here the base and the collector the LED lights up. I've uh, talked about the different types of transistor, uh, discriminated them by their origin, their function, their structure, electric properties, applications. Um, the final thing, thing was their base voltage, that's very important. There are transistors which, that can handle a very high base voltage, a base voltage that's higher than the collector emitter voltage. These transistors are, for instance, examples from that kind of transistors. Also the BD139 can handle a high base uh, current, higher than the collector emitter, sorry, base voltage, higher than the collector emitter voltage. That's the reason why I use it always. When you want to make a switch circuit, uh, it is important that the transistor has a good um, amplification factor. And that's the reason why I always use Darlingtons, or often use Darlingtons. A Darlington consists of two uh, directly coupled transistors, one medium power, but with a high amplification. For instance, this one, PD139. combined with a transistor that can handle more power. That can handle, for instance, 2 ampere in the collector emitter lead. Directly coupled, you may amplify each uh, beta. So when the first transistor has a beta from 300 and the second one, the big transistor, that has the relay in its collector lead, when that transistor has a beta from 60, total amplification is uh, 300 multiplied by 60. And that means an astro astronomical uh, amplification. It means also that when you touch the base from a um, Darlington here with your finger, you will hear the relay in the collector lead from the second transistor uh, hum. By uh, The reason is that there's always 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz hum on your body when you are in the neighborhood of uh, electricity uh, circuits, AC electricity circuits. So that's important. High base voltage makes a transistor suitable for, for switch applications. Also the frequency uh, from a transistor, the frequency that, it, that um, a transistor can amplify is important. These transistors are in fact power transistors, uh, silicon, but they also have a good frequency band. And uh, regarding that issue, I've told in the preceding video that um, the capacitance here and the capacitance here play a role. When the capacitance inside the transistors are high, there is a par they, these are parasitic capacitances and they have to be uh, uh, added to the capacitance that you use here to make your circuit work. So for special transistors, for um, radio transmitters, etc., the whole construction inside the transistor is made to give the, the input where the signal is uh, put in the, to that electrode that the input has a very low input capacitance. And that's done by all kinds of smart ways to etch um, 
all the uh, effective um, silicon parts into a mask, etc., etc. There, there will be much more information uh, about this issue on the internet. When you want to use a transistor as a switch, for instance this one, um, the transistor must be able to change its state between the collector and the emitter very quickly. So no charge may hang inside the transistor when it switches from um, from A to B. When you, for instance, want to switch in a in a ratio from one megahertz, that means that one million times a second the the status um, in the transistor switches the electrical status. So there must be a low capacitance because uh, when there is capacitance. It's possible that charge hangs in the transistor and it doesn't want to change its state quickly. And that's the reason why there are special switch transistors. This transistor for instance here is a germanium switch transistor. It was used in an old computer board in the 60s. It's the ASZ21. And I've salvaged it from that board, I have many of them. And in fact a switch transistor also has to have good high frequency properties. And um, then I mean especially one to when you want to switch, make a circuit that switches on a high frequency rate. For switches in the frequencies between say uh, 10 Hz and um, uh, 40 kilohertz or so, uh, you can almost use every transistor. But when you want to switch on 10 MHz, 20 MHz, it's a good idea to use a transistor with a suitable frequency characteristic and a good switch behavior. The maximum current between the collector emitter is also an issue. I want to give one example. This transistor, for instance, that I've bought on the flea market, it's the BUW12AF. It was sold as a transistor that can handle 1000 volt at 8 ampere. But of course, this is in a real situation not possible. It is impossible that such a small electronic device can switch 8000 watts. Completely impossible. So, in a real situation, Perhaps it's usable for, say, 500 volt at uh, 50 milliampere or so. That's a real, um, that are real values where this transistor can be used. And if you don't use such a transistor, um, but try to go to the to the boundaries of its properties, um, it surely can burn out and can burn out quickly. And that has all also to do with the phenomenon from the second breakdown. The maximum base voltage, I've already told something about the maximum base voltage. Good amplification, also important. A uh, very, very uh, good and Always usable transistor is the BC547B MPN, the BC557B PMP, this transistor, it's just BC557B, its NPN brother is the BC547B. For medium power applications, this transistor, the BD139, and the 2N3055. That are the transistors that I used always. I use all, all sorry, I use them always. Here you see for instance small sine wave generator. For such an application, the BC547B is very well usable. Perfect transistor. Good amplification, etc. So I think that this was all to tell about bipolar transistors.
and I wish you luck.